let me tell you where I am at with the Israeli, uh, the Israeli Hamas Palestinian issue. And I cleared this with some of my friends because I wanted, I am sick. I am sick that the leadership in America, I am sick that our leaders from President Biden, Vice President, uh, 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 can you believe it? Can you believe I just, the, the Vice President name just slipped my mind? Harris, Vice President Harris, and all down the chain, Blinken, Secretary of State, I am flummoxed that these guys can't call out what's happening in Gaza as being a crime, as being an international crime, as being genocide, what's occurring right now in Gaza. That you have water not flowing to hospital, that you have fuel not going to power the generators in these hospitals where they are operating without anesthesia to to cure to fix the people, the bombs are blowing up as Israel indiscriminately bombs uh, Gaza. This is evil. Netanyahu at this point in time has proven that he has no morals any different than Hamas. You could replace the evil being occurring in Gaza right now. It's no different than the evil affected by Hamas on those innocent Israelis. I repeat, I repeat, the evil being executed on innocent Palestinians in, in Gaza right now is no less evil than the evil that has affected our innocent Israeli brothers and sisters in Israel. That 1,400 Israelis that were murdered by that terrorist act by Hamas is no worse. It's no worse than what is occurring in Gaza. I want you to listen to Rula Jabril. I interviewed Rula Jabril about about eight, nine years ago. When the last the last intifada, however many years ago, the last intifada was going on, I interviewed Rula Jabril. Check it. Look out Rula Jabril on my website because it seems like every time we get these skirmishes, Rula is the person to talk to, and why? She tells it like it is, but unfortunately, it seems that we repeat ourselves over and over again. Listen to Rula, and then we'll take it on the other side. Rula Jabril makes it clear that what's going on here, how unfair what's going on, and how the Western media is taking, is calling it. They're getting a little bit better. They're starting to realize the evil within what Netanyahu is doing with his military, the genocide, the killings in Gaza. Check this out. As only just a few dozen trucks have made it in with supplies so far. The UN is saying it needs really a hundred trucks a day to be going in to get the supplies to the people a day. who need it. And and perhaps more. You're probably right, given especially how many people are in even more need than they were originally. And we know that situation in Gaza is 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 pretty sparse for people in what they have on a good day, right? So is it really possible to get what's needed inside Gaza, especially as all indications appear that there's still an imminent ground invasion coming? I mean, this depends on Israel. It doesn't, I mean, Israel, according to international law, is the occupying power. So it's depending on them to decide if these people starve, die by starvation and by thirst. This is international law. This is, this is not my opinion. These are the facts. Uh, Gaza needs now 7,000 trucks because uh, for the last 16 days, they've been under crippling siege. There's no water. 
no electricity, no food. Before the invasion and before this war, Gaza was considered by human rights organization that 50% were below poverty line. They didn't have access to proper food. Before this war, 90% didn't have clean water. Now, we know that children, and according to human rights organization, children are drinking water that is unfit for human consumption. I mean, but also the indifference. Uh, you know, King Abdullah yesterday and Arab leaders are telling the world, look, not only we're dehumanized, we're watching war crimes being committed, and the international community are basically shrugging their, their shoulders and saying, never mind. And this actually is being used today by China and Russia to say, you see, International law is obsolete, doesn't matter, it's optional. And this is very dangerous for America's standing in the world, not even for Israelis, for America's own standing in the world. It is truly heartbreaking to hear what is happening and to see some of the images that are coming out of Gaza right now with these innocent civilians who are suffering so, so badly. I just, I wonder if there is more that can be done. What can be done by regional partners to get people inside Gaza the aid that they need. The regional partners have no power. The only power that is capable or willing or unwilling to do it is the United States and Israel. It's but Egypt, based on the, Egypt and Egypt, Jordan are both saying they, they don't want refugees and you have that, well, that that's Egypt not accurate. border crossing. Uh, again, they have millions of Palestinians that live already there. Israel is, is what the Israel is doing is trying to tell them, basically, you need to bail us out. But according to international law, not even to Egypt or Jordan, it's incumbent on the occupying power to save civilians and not to create a refugee crisis and expel them in perpetuity forever. I think, I mean, if we look at Israel policies, according to what they're saying in words and deeds, they don't want them there forever. They want to expel them, millions of Palestinians. I mean, this is according, not even to me, to international law and to the international community, to the Arab leagues and others, this is ethnic cleansing. I mean, and the fact that President Biden didn't even manage to get 20 trucks into Gaza, it tells you that there's no pressure whatsoever in Israel to do anything. These people are going to die in masses. Gaza is becoming a graveyard. So those, those 20 trucks did get in. And just, I wonder if I can ask, what happens after Israel goes in? They say they want to wipe out Hamas. If they are successful in doing that, what's next? Can you envision Gaza without Hamas there? What would that look like? What's the realistic so scene? I'll tell you what this will look like. Uh, we all remember what Fallujah was and what Mosul was. Those two insurgent war, which is door to door, street to street, were already a bloodbath, a slaughterhouse. And we saw, so if you're looking at Gaza, 2 million, 2.3 million people, if Hamas is 50,000, you have 2 million people in the smallest strip of land, the most populated, the most impoverished. And this is when you will lead a ground invasion on top of it, aerial bombardment, carpet bombing. This will lead to humanity, not even to humanity. This will become basically, you know, a slaughterhouse beyond our imagination, a carnage, a real carnage. And in that moment, I think both the United States and Israel will lose international support. They're already seeing people around the region telling us this will create mass radicalization. Mm -hmm. I remember from Donald Transfer, who used to ask himself after the invasion, not before the invasion, are our policy creating more extremists? Are they creating less extremists? General Petraeus, when he led the surge in Iraq, how did he really reduce the terrorist attack from 50 to zero? There were 50 terrorist attacks in Iraq during the surge. He reduced them to zero. He separated the civilians from the militants, actually ended their subjugation by the Sunni. He involved them in the political process. And this is when basically Al-Qaeda ended in Iraq when they killed Abu Musab al-Zarqawi. If we don't learn from these policies now, I think we will find America in another war in the region. And this is not only plausible, this is highly probable. And I think we need to tell the truth about this because the world is seeing it coming and Americans are delusional about it. I mean, I talk to Arab diplomats and they all tell me the discourse in America is totally detached. They don't understand the region. They talk to themselves about the region through their prism and they don't understand the rest.
And that is so true. The West just doesn't understand what's going on to their detriment. And what the rest of the world sees is they see our president, Joe Biden, hugging Netanyahu. And that hug makes him complicit to them. To them, it makes them complicit. Netanyahu is using our bombs. Netanyahu is using our Iron Dome. Netanyahu is getting funded on the order of over $3 billion a year from us. And those bombs are landing in Gaza. And those bombs are killing others. Yes, we have a problem with the terrorism that has afflicted Israel. But, and here is the big but. There are 1,400 dead Israelis, murdered Israelis. And one of the reasons they were murdered as well is that Netanyahu thought he could contain Hamas. And he got money routed from Qatar, I think it's Qatar or the Emirates, to Hamas. Because he didn't, he wanted a state that he couldn't have a, a Palestinian two-state solution with. So as long as Hamas kept power, there was no two-state solution. And he thought he could just hold them and contain it, and it bit him. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.